Okay, we left off last time uh, with these with this these two sentences. So the questions at this point, so the question at this point resolves into these. One, how can some comportments impugn on the ontical truth of others? And two, supposing they can, how can the choice among them be non-arbitrary? Comportments can impugn on the ontical truth of others if their respective discoverings of entities as entities are mutually incompatible. So an example would be the particle wave duality of physicists and they are able to disclose the being um, of entities because they are able to tell you know, what the entities are and that they are, but they have this, um, the, but they're, you know, the ontological skill here is, in a, is the ontological telling um, as you know for as, which is Hoglund's word for it is that uh, they can tell whether you know something is impossible or not and um, that's the that's the crucial factor so so how, but but how do you tell if something is impossible well when you have two conflicting mutually incompatible results so you have the you know what the experiment should show according to the current theory and, and the hypothesis that you've you've generated due to you know uh, as a sort of abduction uh, or you know as a hypothesis and uh, and the actual result which you know it turns out to be impossible right but then you if you're a Newtonian physicist and you live pre quantum physics pre uh, pre let's say you know pre 20th century you would say that's impossible that this particle wave duality should should manifest itself and show itself as a result so you got this thing this mutual incompatib incompatibility hence okay so so comportments can impugn the ontical truth of other of others if their respective discoverings of entities as entities are mutually incompatible hence the such incompatibility must itself make sense and be tellable or identifiable in practice. That's the ontological kind of telling. Um, it's this kind of skill which would tell you whether something is impossible or not, rather than just what something is. In general, discoverings of entities are incompatible just in case, so the ontic discoverings of entities, not their being, are incompatible just in case the entities themselves as ostensibly discovered would be impossible. And this, at long last, is why the difference between the possible and the impossible matters. Matters in particular to the aim of ontical truth. Remember, being sensitive or being responsive to what matters in a situation is what so findingness is. Ontological so findingness is responsiveness to ostensible impossibilities in the current situation as something that matters. More specifically, the response must be a refusal to accept. So the response must be a refusal to accept any current apparent impossibility. Impossibilities matter by way of being unacceptable. This is familiar enough. If you discover both that your son is now at school and now at home, then something must be wrong, for he cannot be two places at once. Likewise, if you discover that something is a hammer but shatters against a nail, or that something is an electric current but generates no magnetic field, since that would be impossible, something is wrong. So you have to ask, what is wrong? You double check. Re-examine your means of discovery. Find alternative ways to discover the same entities. Seek confirmation from other people, and so on. Soon enough, other things being equal, it becomes clear which of your earlier, which of your earlier apparent discoveries was wrong, which or was merely an appearance, and perhaps also why. 
By such perfectly ordinary procedures, the choice among the incompatible comportments becomes non-arbitrary. To put the emphasis another way, these procedures make feasible a non-arbitrary distinction between mere appearance and reality, that is, the ability to get the entities themselves right. Um, all right.